Mr. Ohayu Mazam. Speaker, the President gave a very solemn and meaningful message that touched on key issues affecting Singaporeans. We are facing tough times, but it is during times like these that our mettle is tested and we are given an opportunity to shape our norms as a nation. We decide how we respond and the path we take. Singapore, as always, has to evolve. She needs to adapt and change to adjust to the changing global environment. She needs to evolve economically, politically and socially, but she can choose to be different from everyone else and do things the Singaporean way. Politically, we are maturing. For some time now, there has been a call for alternative voices to represent the diverse interests in the community. I am encouraged to see our electorate maturing and many people from different backgrounds stepping up to contest during the last general election, offering different perspectives aspiring for a better Singapore. <clears throat> what we have in Singapore is an adversarial process. This process, when carried out in the best traditions of democracy, brings out the best in all of us as we seek to continually improve. Healthy competition is good as we challenge each other to do better and in the end, the nation benefits. However, when people take the adversarial process to its extreme and assert their opinions in a very vicious manner, there is a danger of the society being divided and polarised. During the campaign, on the online space especially, we saw some constructive discourse, but also some malicious comments being passed, vitriolic remarks being expressed, and personal attacks being made, which strayed from the substance of the debate and became an attempt to bring people down instead. An election is an emotive exercise. I appreciate that. However, all of us, must continue to push for decorum and constructive debates always. As we evolve and mature as a nation, we have to find a better way to have discourse and for each of us to express our views and challenge opposing ones. We have been seeing some negative conduct on the internet for some time now. There is increasing cognizance of the cancel culture, which is causing some concern. Cancellation basically refers to an attack on someone's reputation by a determined group of critics because of an opinion or action of that individual that is deemed to be unacceptable. It is a targeted effort to destroy the individual to get them deplatformed or put out of business. Conceptually, the cancel culture is not new. Society had always rallied against what it deems wrong and groups of people have campaigned against individuals to, cens to censure them. However, the internet and social media have amplified and caused an evolution of this phenomenon and its repercussions. For one, online, a certain issue or matter can get viral very quickly and a mob mentality can form long before facts can be verified or discussed. Secondly, the distraction from all the attacks takes attention away from the substance of the matter, which is often then lost in the flood of comments and criticism. Thirdly, people are quickly pushed to take sides and the very person or groups that need to be edified about the error of their ways or to be shown different perspectives are then disengaged. A more serious side effect is that those with genuine views become muted as they fear being judged or lynched by the angry mob. The cancel culture can manifest in many different ways. Several months back, there was an issue that arose within the Malay Muslim community. A popular podcast channel was criticised when it was found to, to have certain episodes where comments which were misogynistic and degrading to women were made. Many women and men called out the hosts. Misogyny is unacceptable and has no place in a progressive society. However, what was actually an opportunity to address an important issue turned out to be a highly polarising exercise for the community. Online, people were pushed to take sides. You're either on the camp asking for the hosts to be deplatformed or are seen as their supporters and by affiliation accept misogyny. Some people I spoke to about the matter felt that there was so much neg negativity and people missed the point about the need for the community to address misogyny. 
We must take a stand against things which are morally unacceptable. However, we need to learn to do so constructively so that the community can learn, have discourse and shape new and better norms. Another trend that we have been seeing is the online movements that have been waged in other countries to change norms and push back against years of repression. Power has shifted to the people with the internet and social media platforms as accessible battlefields. We have seen the hashtag MeToo and hashtag Black Lives Matter movements in the US. There is value in rallying people to call out injustice and shift norms to a more just and fair society. We should encourage people to be conscious of social issues and do their part to bring about positive developments as society evolves and matures. However, we must be conscious of the impact to the community. Inevitably, there will be different opinions and we need to ensure the expression of opposing views do not cause polarisation. The movements in the US have had their fair share of criticisms, even among liberals. So even as we may be inspired by some of these developments abroad, we should not follow them blindly, but instead find the Singapore way to evolve. We have much to learn from the experiences of other countries. However, as we look to others for lessons to develop norms in our nation, we must pause to appreciate the impact of the same in our context. We should be cautious not to jump on the bandwagon and copy and paste the playbook in other countries without adjusting the same for our needs. In particular, we must be keenly aware of our special demographics as a multiracial, multireligious society. Multiracialism is a value we hold here. We must therefore ensure that in our debates and discussions, we are mindful of the impact of our comments and the danger of freeing our social fabric if we pit one group against the other. We must therefore take necessary action to ensure that we shape norms of this cause in our nation. What can we do? We all need to play a part in creating a safe space online that encourages meaningful debates and curbs vitriolic discourse. I sit in the management committee of OnePeople.sg and have been involved in a few discussions with our youth volunteers and participants of our programs recently. We were discussing what were acceptable boundaries when discussing race and religious issues and whether current laws or frameworks need to be adjusted to changing times. Many youth shared that it was not so much the laws they were afraid of. They, were fe they feel afraid of expressing their views online because they fear backlash from others who have different views. So while the government can do its part by putting in place laws and regulations to set the necessary boundaries that circumscribe our discourse, as individuals, we all have a personal responsibility responsibility to behave fairly and call out any action that threatens healthy discussions. Beyond having safe spaces for discussions online and even offline, to truly shape norms, we need to translate our discussions into real action. We need to walk our talk. For this too, we all must play our part. Some policies or legislation may need to shift to shape behaviours. There have been concerns by some in this house about the issues of discriminatory conduct um, by employers on the part of employers. And we may need to review and look at the frameworks in place and improve them. However, we must also take individual responsibility. We must ensure that we ourselves do not discriminate, especially in our conduct with others who are different from us, and that we teach the right values to our children. Mr. Speaker in Malay, Kita kian lihat pelbagai pendapat yang disuarakan tentang isu-isu masa kini yang menjejas rakyat Singapura, terutama sekali dalam talian ataupun online. Yang baiknya, ia menandakan kematangan masyarakat dalam membincangkan isu-isu penting seperti polisi-polisi pemerintah atau norma-norma masyarakat. Yang buruknya, kadangkala perbincangan yang kita lihat di talian amat negatif, menjurus kepada serangan pribadi terhadap seseorang dan lari daripada tajuk asal perbincangan itu. Hal ini membimbangkan kerana kita dapat lihat bagaimana kempen dan budaya dalam talian yang menular di negara lain boleh memecah belahkan masyarakat dan membawa kepada keganasan. Maka itu amat penting untuk kita pastikan di Singapura kita membentuk norma dan cara kita sendiri untuk melakukan perbincangan dalam talian. Terutama sekali apabila menyentuh tentang isu-isu hangat dan sensitif isu berkaitan agama dan perkauman atau isu diskriminasi misalnya adalah isu-isu penting yang harus kita hadapi dalam masyarakat majmuk. Kita perlu berani untuk bersuara dan tegas menegur sekiranya berlakunya sesuatu yang bercanggah dengan nilai-nilai negara kita. Kita juga harus mahu terus menyumbangkan saranan-saranan yang dapat memperbaiki kehidupan rakyat negara kita. Tetapi kita perlu selalu bersandarkan kepada fakta 
bukan sekadar menerima cerita-cerita sahaja yang kita dengar bulat-bulat. Dan apabila kita berdepan dengan pandangan yang berbeza, kita perlu berbincang dengan penuh hemah dan dengan sikap yang berbina. Kita sememangnya sedang menghadapi masa-masa yang mencabar. Namun dalam masa kesusahanlah, kepribadian dan kewibawaan, kewibawaan kita sebagai satu masyarakat diuji. Kita punya peluang untuk membentuk norma-norma dalam negara kita. Saya berharap kita dapat memilih cara kita sendiri, gaya Singapura dalam membahaskan isu-isu penting dalam negara kita. Semoga dengan sumbangan yang konstruktif, Singapura akan terus berkembang dan menjadi satu masyarakat yang inklusif di mana kita semua punya peluang untuk bekerja, membina keluarga dan mencapai aspirasi kita. How we treat each other will determine how we evolve as a nation. Our individual actions accumulate to create the culture of our society. I hope to do my part to make this world kinder, more compassionate, more accepting of differences. I hope to make this place a better place for my son, Aiden. Aiden, as many of you know, has Down syndrome. As a parent, I worry about how he will be treated when he grows up. I wonder if people will be patient with him, whether they will be kind, and whether he will have the support he needs to live well. I'm happy to hear that there will be stronger support for special needs students by training educators, opening new special education schools, and upgrading current ones. The efforts in improving the support and infrastructure has been a work in progress. We have made many big strides, and Ms. Denise Poa deserves special mention for all the effort that she has done in this house as well as outside to champion the needs of the special needs community. We can and should continue to build on these efforts. I do hope that when we look at reviewing some of the support given, we go beyond lip service and truly work towards changing attitudes and norms. I hope that we truly learn what empathy is. We should not tick boxes and be content to just address one feedback at a time. So when we talk about improving infrastructure, it is not enough to just build ramps and a few inclusive playgrounds. We must really nudge behaviours to facilitate and make it convenient for those who have disabilities to join in all the activities that others are involved in. When we talk about creating awareness and being inclusive in workspace, workplaces, it is not enough to just incentivize employers to employ people with disabilities. We must encourage understanding and conversations amongst employers and co-workers. We must learn to see the value and contributions of people who may be differently able. When we talk about building the capacity and capability of educators, it may not be enough to just train a select group of teachers or provide basic training for all teachers. We must provide the skills to all educators to identify needs, teach the right values and attitudes, and inculcate a culture of pervasive inclusivity within our education system. We need to look we, we need to also look at enhancing the career pathway of educators in the special needs sector. The reality is that embracing and supporting this community brings great value to Singapore as a whole. There is great economic value in empowering this group with the necessary skills to, care, to take care of themselves as, and to be as independent as possible. If we deal with this issue upstream, we will spend less in providing support for them in the future. When we enable people with disabilities, we enable the whole community. More importantly, they are differently abled and should be seen as an equally valued member of the community. People with special needs are conduits through which we all learn to be kinder and more compassionate. This I learned from you, Mr. Speaker. A kind and compassionate society is one that can brave through difficult challenges and emerge stronger. It is so important that in the midst of all the turbulence, we remain steadfast in preserving and shaping our values as a nation and remain a fair and just society a society that is truly embracing of diversity. It is a great honour and privilege to be able to debate in this august house. As I said in my maiden speech, in this house, we may not always agree with each other, but we debate respectfully. I believe this decorum can extend beyond this house, and I hope as a nation we always seek consensus, not conflict. I hope as a nation we embrace our differences and be kind and compassionate always. Mr Speaker, I support the motion. Leader. Mr. Speaker, may I seek your consent to move that the debate be now adjourned? Give my consent. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> I beg to move that the debate be now adjourned. The question is that the debate be now adjourned. As many as of the opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Mr. Patrick Tay, resumption of debate, what day?
tomorrow, please. So be it. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that Parliament do now adjourn to 1 p.m. tomorrow. The question is that Parliament do now be adjourned to 1 p.m. tomorrow. As many as are of the opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order. Order.